the judgment of God. In one point, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7 verse 1, do not judge or you shall be judged. But also we read in John chapter 5 that he says, the father judges no one, but he has committed all judgment to the son. So are we supposed to judge or not? Hey guys, thank you for joining us. Today we have uh, another session with another question um, that seems to be a um, basically contradiction between two things that Jesus said, but we're going to see uh, what they are and what they mean. So the first one is in uh, Matthew chapter 7, when uh, Jesus clearly is saying that do not judge that you may not be judged. But at the same time in John chapter 5 verse 22, he says, the father has committed all judgment to the Son. Uh, so we want to see that uh, if this is true that we are not to judge anyone or maybe we are to judge. So just to understand what uh, maybe uh, judgment is and um, uh, just to see what is our position. What First of all, what did Jesus do? What did Jesus come to do? And what are we basically, what, what is our role right now? So uh, Rhodes is going to um, explain to us maybe that uh, difference between the two mm -hmm. or maybe it's not a difference. Maybe actually it's just um, a better understanding or just looking at it from a different perspective. Um, yeah, exactly. So because uh, the, the concept of judgment, actually, it's very... Uh, questionable, you know, like because you know we all of us have grown up and um, in the world, and uh, people have told us, and the world has you know told us that don't judge, why are you judging? Don't judge, and and we can actually see that even in uh, Gospel of Matthew chapter seven that Jesus even says don't judge. But interestingly, um, when we come to the uh, Gospel of John, we see in the Gospel of John something completely different. And um, so, um, if we go and read in John chapter. 5 verse 22 we see that Jesus here says actually you know um, uh, the father uh, let's re let's read the verse actually so for the father judges no one but has committed all judgment to the son so basically there is a judgment that the father has given this judgment to the son to bring the judgment so we can see here that son is actually a judge and it is supposed to bring the judgment so if the son if the father judges no one and the father has given the judgment to the son and the son is gonna not not gonna judge anyone then we don't come to that verse that Isaiah speaks that let the earth rejoice and mm -hmm. let the and um, let the trees clap their hand and let us be happy because the judgment of God has come so if you look at the book the the Bible we see that the judgment has this um, great part in the life of sons and when we come to the mm -hmm. book of Revelation we see that in Revelation chapter 20 there are some group of people that are actually sitting on the throne judging and there's a judgment that is happening uh, in the book of Revelation and uh, so and even um, uh, uh, verse 4 in, uh, verse uh, sorry book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 says that uh, they even uh, reign with Christ for 1,000 years and we see that there is a judgment that is constantly is happening and this judgment is the sons of God is bringing that judgment so uh, so what is this then? So take, let's take a look at uh, a couple of verses and we, can, we just want to see what kind of judgment we are not supposed to do and what kind of judgment we are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Because in Matthew chapter 7 it says, Judge not or, uh, so, or you shall be judged with the same measure that you use. It will be measured to you. That in the next verse talks about that. But if we go to John chapter 5 and look at verse 30, we see that Jesus is talking here and Jesus says, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. So, 
So he's hearing something and what he's hearing is causing him to bring a judgment. So he's actually doing the judgment. Based, exactly. Yeah. So he's doing the judgment here. And because a few verses before that, as we read together in uh, chapter in uh, verse 22, the father has committed all the judgments to the son, right? So that's why we see in verse 30 again, I can of myself do nothing as I hear, I do. I judge and my judgment is righteous so he's talking about a judgment that is righteous and this righteous judgment comes by hearing mm -hmm. so because he's hearing something then he's bringing some kind of judgment and he calls that judgment righteous so we want to pay attention that he doesn't say I judge because I see he judged because he hears. But let's see, what is he basically hearing? Because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. So basically what he's saying is, because I hear the will of the Father, and I know the will of the Father, because I am seeking the will of the Father, therefore I bring a judgment, and that judgment is a righteous judgment. So. We go back to verse 22, the father judges no one and has committed all the judgments to the son. So verse 33, we just want to link them together. Verse 33 says, so therefore the, uh, the son knows the will of the father and because the son knows and seeks the will of the father, so the son brings the judgment that is the will of the Father. Exactly. And that is called the righteous judgment. We will, we are going to come back to this verse again, but let's take a look at a couple of verses. Let's go to... So, just uh, one point here. Mm -hmm. uh, the only way to bring that judgment is to hear the voice of the Father. That's right. And to know the will of the yeah. Father. And this is called the righteous judgment. And I'm going to talk about it shortly. What is the will of the Father? That once you bring that will, of the Father on earth, you are actually judging. Yeah. You are actually bringing the righteous judgment of God. And we, I wanna, what I want to do today, I just want to make this clear right now, that we are called to judge. Mm -hmm. um, I was at the gym and they put huge note there, do not judge. And I started laughing and I felt the Lord had started talking to me. No, you are supposed to judge. But what kind of judgment we are not supposed and what kind of judgment we are supposed? God made us from the beginning to reign and rule on earth. If we don't judge, reigning and ruling will Doesn't never happen. happen. So that's why we are called to judge. But we want to see the judgment that we are called to do is the righteous judgment of God, which is bringing simply the will of God on earth. And we, will, we are going to see this shortly. But before that, let's see what kind of judgment we are not supposed to do that. Um, let's go to uh, John chapter um, 8, um, verse 15. So Jesus is talking here again. And Jesus says, you judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. Okay. We just read in chapter 5 that Jesus said, actually, I judge. And I bring my judgment is righteous. But all of a sudden, he comes here and he says, I judge no one. But he judged no one according to the flesh. Because here it says, you judge according to the flesh. I judge no one according to the flesh. So basically what he's saying, my judgment is not according to the flesh. I will never judge anyone according to the flesh. So it's not, it's like, it's not the way you judge. That's right. Because anytime that we say uh, no judgment, what me we mean is actually no judgment according to man. Like nobody is given the right to judge another according to human uh, rights exactly. and perspective and understanding. Mm -hmm. So. But Jesus says the only way that you're supposed to judge is um, if you can hear from God, so you understand His will, and then you declare that. That's right, exactly. And if you go back one chapter before, chapter 7, and um, He, he um, brings that in a different way of saying, basically, chapter 7, verse 24, it says, Do not judge. Okay, hold on a second. 
In Matthew 7 told us, do not judge or you will be judged. And we can find it right here, but here gives us the complete sentence that Matthew 7 maybe shortened that sentence, or maybe, you know, we just want to understand it in a better way. So verse 24 says, do not judge according to appearance, yeah. but judge with righteous judgment. So basically, this is what it, what it says. In Matthew 7 says, do not judge or you shall be judged. So what it says, do not judge according to the appearance, according to the flesh, according to what you see with your own eyes and what you hear with your fleshly ears, basically. If you bring that kind of judgment on your brother or on anything, the same judgment will come upon you. If you judge in flesh, you will be judged in flesh. You know why? Because when you judge someone, you put yourself in a position of a judge. And you say, I am a judge, and according to my law, this is the judgment that has to happen. And next time, because you have already judged someone according to the flesh, according to your own judgment, then you will bring the same judgment on yourself. Because you just defined what is the rules and what is, the, what is really judgment that needs to happen. And because you have defined that judgment in the flesh and you have approved it and you have judged someone according to flesh, what happened is next time you will bring the same judgment on yourself. I just want to pay attention here that I have come across some people are asking this question. It says, or when they are quoting, they say, well, don't judge or God will judge you. This is not what it says. God judgment is the righteous judgment and his judgment is according to the will of God. But here what Matthew chapter 7 says that don't judge or you shall be judged. Why? Because when the moment you start ju judging according to a standard that you believe, you will always judge yourself according to that law and a standard also. But now Jesus tells us that don't judge according to appearance. Don't judge anything according to what you see with the fleshly mind and with the fleshly eyes and with the fleshly ears. Yeah. But we, we, ought to, we ought to bring the righteous judgment of God. So I just want to go to, let's go to Romans chapter 2. And I, wanna, I want all of us to see a scripture here that will bring, that has been misquoted a lot of times. And, that, uh, and then we will come back and talk about the will of God and understand, okay, what is the will of God? That if I bring the will of God, then I have the righteous judgment. Let's go to Romans chapter 2. So uh, before going there, I want to just again maybe emphasize on, oh, yeah, he yeah. says, um, do not judge according to appearance. And then he says, uh, as I hear, I judge. That's right. So he says, not according to appearance, but according to what you hear. Exactly. What is he trying to say? When you see, I mean, this will something, when you see a person, when you see the actions of a person, all you know is what you see. Mm. You don't know anything beyond that. You're not the all-knowing God. So you don't know what has caused this person to be in this situation. What has caused this person to be in this sin? What has caused this person to be in this weakness? What has caused this person to be angry, to be mad, to be mm -hmm. jealous, to be covet, uh, basically covetous? Or any of those things that um, we can easily point finger at and say, this is not right. He says, instead of this, you're supposed to actually hear what God says because God is all-knowing. Yes, he can see where he mm -hmm. is, but he, can, he knows why he created him. He knows his destiny and he knows what can change him. So if I could know what God knows, right. I could deal with this person the way God deals exactly. with this person. Mm -hmm. So that means if I could hear from him, first of all, I could know what God knows. Mm. If I could hear God, I could know what God knows because when he speaks, he speaks his knowledge. And when I know that in my dealing with people, I don't rely on their appearance or what I can see from them. I rely on what I have heard from God. Mm. That's why we can go to somebody that, is, that doesn't even know God and we can just speak into their lives. And they say, you know me better than me. Yes, because mm. we hear God. And 
what we declare over him is his will. Um, so before, maybe before we go, now that you said this, before um, we go to Romans chapter 2, maybe we, we should go back to John chapter 5 and take a look at this and just uh, talk about the will of God and a little and we can continue the subject from there. So in, um, in John chapter 5, verse 22, we read it. We read in the verse 22 that for the father judges no one, but has committed all judgments to the son. So this is verse 22 in John chapter 5 that we just read. But interestingly, the verse before that says something very interesting. It says, for as the father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the son gives life to whom he will. Mm -hmm. And then it says, for the father judges no one, but he has given all the judgment to the son. So basically, if we just want to read in the context and just understand the scripture one before and after of one scripture, it can open, us, open up the scripture for us. It says, the father has given the judgment to the son. And this is the John who's doing the judgment. Why? Because as the father raises the dead, the son also gives life to him who wills. And Jesus said, my judgment is righteous because I, I do the will of the father. So we can see here that w the will of the father, it's giving life, it's raising the dead, it's giving life. And he has given the same thing to the, to the son to bring the judgment of life. So basically, if we see, if, even we can see that in, um, in verse, um, in John chapter 16, 6, verse 40, Jesus is speaking here. Um, it says, uh, verse 40, and this is the will of him who sent me. So verse, uh, chapter 5 said, I just seek the will of Father, the will of the Father. Here it says, this is the will of him who sent me that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life. And I will raise Him up in the last day. So putting all these scriptures together, we see simply the will of God is life and resurrection, raising the dead and giving life. This is the will of, the will of God. And this is all God is doing yeah. because it says the son can do nothing of himself, but he does the same thing that the father is doing. And what the father is doing, the father is giving life. So basically the will of the father in the son is giving life to the son and to everyone who come across the son and the son is supposed to judge that situation or that, per, that um, way. So basically what we see here is, every time we are in a situation that uh, we need, that the, uh, the, when we bring life to people, we are doing the will of God and this is how we have done judgment. This is how we have brought this righteous judgment of God. But if I see someone according to the flesh, their actions, what they have done, what they have said, what they have believed, or what they have you know, yeah. gone through, and if I bring that kind of action according to what they have done, this is not called a righteous judgment. judgment. The, and it's interesting because like the religion that we came from and before we became a Christian or um, many other beliefs out there, it's, it says the righteous judgment is eye for eye or tooth for tooth. It's if someone has done something to you, then you do the same thing for that person basically. And this is how you brought the righteous judgment. But when we come to the eyes of God and when we see how God sees this, God does not judge us according to what we do, according to what we believe and according to what we have done. But actually his judgment is according to his own will, to his own purpose, to his own works. He brings a judgment that is in alignment to what he has done, not because of what we have done. And when we come as sons of God into the picture, and when we look at this uh, someone for a judgment, when we look to judge something, if we look a person according to what they were, according to the outward appearance, mm -hmm. according to their own, the way they have done, according to their own experience, if I judge them according to what they have done, I have judged according to the flesh. Exactly. And if I continue to do that, that means I 
approved as a king that this kind of judgment is righteous, then the next time I will judge myself also according to the flesh. I always but, come to basically the story of the woman that was caught in adultery. Mm -hmm. You can clearly see actually what Jesus meant by not judging and judging. Because there are two parties uh, on both sides of the woman. Mm -hmm. One is the Pharisees who have the law of Moses. One is Jesus that hears God. The right. father and he knows his heart and they are condemning the woman jesus is uh, releasing that woman mm -hmm. so what what is happening those people are bringing death to the woman and jesus is taking that woman out of death right she's raising her <laughs> actually uh symbolically from uh, the death that is coming to her yeah. so what is he doing he's releasing a judgment that brings everlasting life that's what we saw that in uh, John chapter 6 verse 40 that this is the will of the Father uh, that whoever believes in the Son uh, may have everlasting exactly. life. Exactly. Yeah. So the judgment of God, the righteous judgment of God is to bring life to every area that there is a death. Death, exactly. He actually, he's the God of resurrection. Mm -hmm. Yes, he sees mankind in sin, but he brings them out of sin and puts them in righteousness. Mm. He sees man in weakness, but he brings them out and he puts them in strength. He yeah. sees mankind in, uh, let's say, uh, death and he brings them mm -hmm. out, puts them in life. And that's the judgment of God. But what is the judgment of man? Yes. Death. Exactly. How do we, uh, how mankind has been judging so far by bringing death, death. in every exactly. situation? Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't have any power to do anything beyond that. But God is a bigger than that. Yeah. God is the God of actually love, mercy, compassion, mm -hmm. uh, grace. And he can do above what he can see in people. He can do according to his nature. Yeah. He can do according to his basically compassion, his mercy, he can release that. Yeah. And that causes mankind to be changed and to be transformed. If God really wanted to judge us according to us, according to what we have done and what we have believed, then he would have never come and gone on the cross. Because, you know, as the scripture said, when we were enemies, he died for us and he gave his life for us. So if we really look, look at that, if we are... Um, if he was supposed to judge us according to us, according to our behavior, our actions, what we said, he would have never um, died for us on the cross because we were enemies. Yeah. And um, if the, the righteous, uh, the judgment of the flesh says that uh, eye for eye and tooth for tooth, if you are an enemy, then I am the enemy too. But when we come to God, we have to see two different perspectives and what Jesus has been doing, it's mostly the Gospel of John, uh, talking about the judgment and the righteous judgment of God, it's there are two different judgments. There's a judgment that man brings constantly on man, and there's a judgment that God brings on man. And when we come to be a sons of God, we are separated from the realm that man is ruling and judging, and we are entered into a realm that God the Father is ruling and has given all the judgments to us. So um, and this is how the redemption of the world start happening when the sons of God, they, they rise up and they sit on the place of judgment and bring the righteous judgment of God yeah. on earth by bringing life into the death and abolishing the righteous judgment of man, which is not righteous. It's self-righteous. It is self-righteous judgment of man, basically, which brings death and destruction. And if you really look at all the things that are happening in the world, when man wants to to bring a judgment in any situation, they bring death, they bring um, lifetime prison, and they bring, you know, like um, death because you have done this. But the interesting part is how, how God is doing that, that's important. And what Jesus said in John chapter five, it says, uh, if we go read, uh, we, we read verse 22 and we read the verse 21, but if we read a couple of verse before that, it says, uh, the son can do nothing of himself. He does what he sees the father yeah. is doing. So, so we, our judgment comes not by what we are seeing, in the outward appearance of man, but what we see the Father is doing. And the moment we see, we have the eyes of the Father and we see what he is doing, then we will bring the will of the Father on earth and we will bring the righteous judgment of God. If you read, if you read the Old Testament and the prophets, 
the Psalms and uh, Isaiah, you, we, you, can find, you can find like many places, it is talking about the righteous judgment of God. And people are happy um, or it just, it's declared and proclaimed to be happy because the judgment of God has come. So judgment of God is not something that we have to be afraid of. It is something that we have to look for. It is something that we need it because he, when he judges a situation, he brings light into darkness. When he judges a situation, he brings life into death. And, and that is when we can even see, and as sons and it starts judging the, basically the world around us. Um, so I wanted to go to Romans chapter 2, if you want to say something here. Or um, just continue. one thing, mm -hmm. maybe I can just say in the book of John still, because yeah. uh, th there could be a question that, um, I mean, I think so far we have been on whether we should judge or uh, not, which we kind of settled that yes, we need to judge, and yes, we should not judge also. That's right. We should judge according to what we hear from God, which is called according to the Spirit. We should not judge according to appearance, which is called uh, judging according to flesh. Right. So we're supposed to judge according to Spirit and not judge according to flesh. Now, also that, okay, what about uh, the day of judgment, the judgment day? What's mm -hmm. going to happen there? Uh, or what did Jesus say about this? Maybe, okay, this was the time Jesus came, he went on the mm -hmm. cross, he said, Father, forgive them. But uh, maybe actually there is a day that he's going to do completely something against uh, what he has done. Can it be possible mm -hmm. that he would do something against what he did? What if the judgment of God is a revelation of a judgment that has already happened? That's right. Which is proclamation of life over mankind. Exactly. What if what Jesus said in John chapter 12, mm. that now is uh, the, the judgment time. of this, this world. world. Now the ruler of this world shall be judged. And when I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself. Mm -hmm. What if what he said is true? What if when he was going on the cross, because that's the scene. What if when he was going on the cross and he said, now is the judgment of this world is true. What if crucifixion was the place that the judgment, crucifixion and resurrection, was the place that the judgment was done? No. And all we are discovering is a revelation of that judgment, what it means. I mean, none of us knew anything about the righteous judgment of God. All thought, well, God loves you, but at the same time, He's just, and He's gonna punish you because of your sin. But eventually, when we went through the word and the Spirit started bringing up the truth. We said, no, wait a minute. I mean, all those things we know, but how do we know them? Yeah. We were told. That's mm -hmm. what majority have believed. But what if, if we allow the scripture to open itself, the spirit of God to breathe into what is written and we can understand there is something that has happened and now we are discovering what happened. Mm -hmm. What if what Jesus said on the cross, it's forever. Mm -hmm. Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. That's right. So why do we think that in future it's going to change? Now, that's the reason I said, let's look at chapter 12. Mm -hmm. That he said, actually, there is a day of judgment, but let's see what is going to be there. Mm -hmm. John chapter 12, verse um, 47. Mm -hmm. He says, and if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. Let's see what judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. Right. But what has he so far spoken? Life. Mm -hmm. All the time bringing life into corruption, into death, into sickness, into disease, into mm. bondage, into slavery, into anger, into all betrayal. In every place he constantly spoke life. And we can see this clearly in verse 49. He says, And I have not spoken on my own, but the Father who sent me gave me the command and what I, that what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command, his command is everlasting life. So he says the word that in that day should judge you is the command that the Father has given me and the command is eternal life. And the interest, interesting is uh, like verse 48 that you read, it says, he who rejects me and does not receive my, my words um, has, 
has that has that that judges him why because the verse 47 said if anyone hears my words and does not believe i do not judge him what is he saying he says i will never judge you according to what you believe or what you don't believe so if i speak and you don't believe my judgment is and is not has nothing to do with you yeah. i don't judge you because you didn't believe i didn't bring a judgment because or against something that you didn't bring it. He says, when I speak a word, whether or not you believe it, you receive something and that will judge you. Yeah. And what you receive is the word because I just spoke a word and you just heard the word of God. So you have that which will judge you. Mm -hmm. And what is that word that, that he's a speak, he spoke? Verse 50 says, this is the command. Whatever I'm speaking is the command of the Father. So basically, and I know his will is everlasting life. This is what, this is, what is basically Jesus is saying here is my words are life. And the moment you hear it, that word starts bringing judgment. I will never bring a judgment on you because... Again, some, because you didn't believe it. Yeah. But my judgment is because of the word that I speak. And that word is everlasting life. So receive basically that life. And this is a good place to go to Romans chapter 2. And um, so we want to see there are different types of judgment. And we want to receive, first of all, we want to receive the judgment of God. Because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, don't judge and as we talk, don't judge according to flesh or you will, will be judged. Basically what it says, if you receive the judgment of man, if you judge according to flesh, you will be judged according to the flesh. What happened is you will receive the judgment of the flesh, not the judgment of God. So what do we need to do? We need to seek the righteous judgment of God in our lives, not the judgment that man brings according to the flesh. And so if we go to Romans chapter 12, 2, verse 12, it says, For as many as have sinned without law will also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. So we see he's talking about two groups of people, one group that has, has the law and another group that doesn't have the law. So, and then he's talking about the judgment. So the group of people that had the law, let's say the Jews and Israel, the Jews that they received the law of Moses. And there's another group of people that is called Gentiles and they don't have the law. But we are, we are going to, when we continue reading, we see actually they had some kind of law for themselves too. Verse 13, for not the hearers of the law are justified in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. For when Gentiles, who are the Gentiles? Gentiles are those who did not receive the law of Moses. When Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law. So basically he says by nature they do the law even though the law wasn't given to them. But in their nature they knew they shouldn't commit adultery, they shouldn't kill, they shouldn't steal, you know, they should worship God, right? So it's by their nature. Um, the, um, they by, by nature do the things in the law. These, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. So basically what he says, there's two groups. One group, the law was given to them. Another group, the law wasn't given to them, but they made law for themselves. So both groups have law. So even Jews and Gentiles, they both are living according to a law, basically, right? So verse 15. Um, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts, um, their thought, their thoughts uh, accusing or else excusing them. So basically, this is what it says: Jews received the law, and they were judged. They were judging everything according to the law. But what happened was with the Gentiles, Gentiles didn't receive the law of Moses, but according to the nature, they had the law and their conscience was excusing them. Their conscience was accusing, uh, accusing them. them or excusing them according to that kind of law that they had in their, their, their conscience. So both have some kind of judgment standards. 
Jews have the judgment standards, the Gentiles have the judgment standards. They judge themselves according to the law that they have. So basic, but, so we see there are Jews, Gentiles, and now he's going to talk about God and see how does God bring a judgment. Verse 16, in that day when God will judge the secret of man by Jesus Christ according to the gospel. What is he saying? It says, okay, so there's a judgment that Jews bring, which is according to the law of Moses. There's a judgment that Gentiles constantly are under, and that's the judgment of their conscience, which is something that they, they believe that this is right and this is wrong, and they bring that judgment to themselves and others. But there is another judgment that God brings that judgment, and that judgment is according to Jesus Christ, as Masut is according to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with according to what you believe and what, the, what kind of law you have made for yourself. It is according to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is according to a good news. So basically, the righteous judgment of God, when God judges us, it's the good news that happens to us because it is not according to the law that I made for myself or the beliefs that I have, but it is according to the death of Jesus and resurrection of Jesus. As Masood talked about, the judgment was done there. The judgment is finished there. And what we do is we are only having the understanding and revelation of what just what really happened and how can I really have that. So basically, what I wanted all of us to see here is that um, whether you're a Jew or a Gentile, you are under some kind of judgment of, for yourself. And it is according to the flesh, according to the law, according to appearance, outward appearance, te tooth for tooth, cheek for cheek, I don't know, eye for eye. But when we come to God, we receive the righteous judgment of God, which is according to his will. And Jesus said, I have come to do the will of the Father. I'm going to die and I will be raised the third day. So his judgment for God's judgment for people, it is according to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ in bringing life to darkness and light, uh, life to death and light into darkness. And this is the kind of judgment that we as sons of God has, have, to, have to start judging and bring the will of God on earth. And if, you, if we go to book of uh, Revelation, um, chapter 20, we see that people are sitting on the throne judging and a few verses later, the dead are raised. Yeah. The dead are raised from the dead. So, so, um, so now, by now, we understood what kind of judgment we are not supposed to do. What is the reason? Why am I not supposed to judge according to flesh? Because we are looking for the righteous judgment of God in our lives, which is done according to what He has done, not according to what we have done, basically. That's true. Thank you, Rose. And um, I think that's the end of this session. Uh, so um, I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, series that we have started. And uh, again, if you have any question, if you have any comment, please, uh, you can comment it down below. Uh, and um, as much as we can, we, we're going to respond. And also maybe we can use actually some of your questions in our next uh, videos. Um, so because I know if uh, anyone has a question, that's the question for everyone. And we're not here to say that we know at all, but I mean, whatever has been revealed to us, whatever ha we have seen, uh, we actually are willing to give it away because we know it's going to help people. There is much into this, much into the whole understanding of judgment because eventually the manifestation of sons of God is the people that uh, are called sons of God have found uh, their heart to be the heart of the Father and that's they right. judge just as their Father judges. And that's to bring life and not death. Not to be like Adam but to be Christ. So it's a huge concept, it's a huge understanding and it changes the world it literally is the hope of creation for the true judgment of god to come on earth so uh, anyways until next time uh, the grace of the lord jesus christ the love of god the father and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all thanks for watching we hope you enjoyed our video today if you did will you do two things number one share with somebody else and number two click subscribe button below you will get notifications every time we release a new video. And by subscribing, you support us, our ministry, our message, and this channel. We really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter yet, 
go to perfectedbyblood.com forward slash sign up and sign up. You'll get a free ebook called Unveiled Word, a simple guide to understand the Bible. You'll also be notified about new articles about our ministry updates and our upcoming brand new online courses. Make sure to subscribe to our new podcast, Perfected by Blood. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you can find a podcast. It's an exclusive place where we share our thoughts about life, about the Word of God, and our advice for you as you seek to live a transformed life. It's called Perfected by Blood. Make sure you subscribe. And if you're ready to take your life into a whole new level, to go deeper and go bigger in God, make sure you grab my book. The Flood of Mercy, Supernatural Help in Your Greatest Time of Need. It's available on Amazon right now. When you order your copy, you're really supporting our ministry and the message we carry. And you'll also be getting a book that it will reveal to you how you can stop trying to fulfill God's supernatural plan for your life through natural means. Instead, you can receive the power of His mercy through deeper understanding of God's compassionate heart. This book helps you to change your mind, believe in God's goodness, receive His involvement in your day-to-day life, and finally, lift up the burdens off of your shoulders. It's called The Flood of Mercy, Supernatural Help in Your Greatest Time of Need. It's available on Amazon right now. Thanks for tuning in.